Welcome to the Put On Waivers Media Group, home of the Put On Raiders Podcast and the Student Body Right Podcast. This is your place for the best breakdowns and the best insight for those who fight on and bleed silver and black. Now, here are your hosts, Dwayne Douglas and Ryan Holmes. Welcome, everybody, to the glorious episode of the Put On Raiders podcast. I'm your host, Dwayne Douglas, along with Ryan Holmes, and we are podcasting off the beautiful shores of the Pacific Ocean. Beautiful day out here in Southern California. P-O-R-S-B-R is my Twitter handle, and Ryan's is R-H-O-L-M-42-858-299-5592 is a text line. we got some questions about the text line that we'll discuss today. Um, Ryan, how are you doing today? Doing good. Just got through the All-22 last night, so have a good grasp on the Packers game. Uh, on offense, uh, offense must look really good, right? No, Dude, I did. So I, I'm, I'm happy you posted it because that play, um, I, I, I couldn't. The TV copy didn't give you the gist of how open Michael Mayer was on that play. I mean, he was uh, that there was he's running for he's running for a minute. I mean, that's uh, that's at least a 30, 30, 30, 30, 40 yard gain. He, he's not the slowest person in the world. He's I'm not saying he's you know James Jet, but geez. Yes, that was, that, that was a tough one to swallow. Especially because if he completes that pass, and this is at the end of the game, the three minutes to go, the game's over. They they get a first down, yeah. the game's over. Game's over. Game's and over. They, ended, they ended up missing the field goal two plays later. So, um, Mayer wasn't the first or the second read in the route. I get it. But Jimmy had enough time. Like, the chip block knocked over the defensive end and the defensive tackle. Yeah. And – you know, he was looking left. He was looking for the quick curl to Devontae. It was covered. Then he went down the middle looking for Renfro. The safety was working back that way. Uh, and then he kind of just dumped the ball off to Jacobs for like a – I think it was a five-yard game. But there was nobody within like 15 to 20 yards yeah. of Michael Mayer out in the flat. That's crazy. That's crazy. Um, real quick, so we'll start we'll, we'll us off now with a couple, couple, couple of things um, just around the league. Um, um, our good friends at Pro Football Focus said Marcus Peters used a legal horse collar tackle to save a touchdown. It's possibly it possibly also the outcome of the game on Monday night. The league should <laughs> should have a good conversation on whether or not to to uh, award a touchdown if this happens again. Your thoughts? I think Mike Florio is reaching, and he he always is yes. looking for the conspiracy theory and the weeds. Yes. Um, Marcus Peters had to do what Marcus Peters had to do to get him on the ground. Yeah. And knowing that was a penalty, the Raiders took the penalty. And good for the defense to step up for three straight plays and force a field goal. It, it only affected the outcome of the game because the Packers couldn't get three yards and score a touchdown. Exactly. So, like, I mean, my, my thing is this is like, how about the, how about the accountability? You had – put the pressure back on. The conversation should be, like, should be on Mike, uh, Matt LaFleur you got the ball at the five yard with a three, five, three, five yard line, whatever, inside the five, and you can't score a touchdown to kind of to do what you have to do to win the game. So, like, I don't want to, I don't want to hear anything crying about that. Um, hearing a lot of um, conversation about the about the tush push or the or brotherly push, whatever that should that play be out of football? I think it should personally. The brotherly shove, they call it, which is a great name for it. Going back to the brotherly love, the old WWF uh, manager yeah. wrestler. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't think it. You, you saw them, you know, the Bush push in the college level with Matt Liner and Reggie Bush at Notre Dame, and they kind of tried to get rid of that. I think they should. Like, I don't even like it when the tight end comes in motion and pushes. Okay, if you're going to run a quarterback sneak, run a quarterback sneak. But the defense has almost no chance. If it's third and or fourth and a yard, third and a yard, it, a lot of times the offensive linemen are false starting anyways, and they're not calling because everything's jammed up together. You can't really see guys moving, and it's it's not rugby; it's football. So I, I think they should outlaw. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not I'm not sure how I feel about it yet, but we'll see. But, but I, don't, I know it's a conversation. I think it's kind. Of, I think some something. The more and more I see Philadelphia use it, I think something's coming. I, I I think next year I think next year they'll they'll say they'll, they'll say something they'll say something about it. Um, so Frank Clark, um, with the Broncos, not with the Broncos. The Raiders look are quote unquote looking for a pass rusher. Uh, he does have off the field domestic violence, I believe, and I think that is something that is an absolute for Mark Davis is and the the cost and everything like that. That is as absolute no no. 
for the Raiders. That's uh, it's not even a conversation. So I don't think he's uh, somebody who the Raiders would be who would, who the Raiders would end up signing. Yeah, I would think even though the conversation is going to be a swap of late round picks, league minimum, I I just don't think he fits what Mark Davis values, and, yeah. as you mentioned. So I don't I don't see that as a fit. It you know that aside of what happened in college. Um, and even he had some gun issues at an airport not too long ago as well. You know, if that wasn't in the background, then, then I would say, yeah, it probably would be a fit, even though it's within the division. The Raiders clearly are looking for pass rush up. I think it's a guy on a one-year deal. Um, I, I, I see these names thrown around like Brian Burns and Leonard Williams. I don't see either one of those really being a fit either. To, to trade for Brian Burns, you're going to have to give up at least a first-round pick, and you're admitting that we completely missed on Tyree Wilson five games into his career because 100%. you're not going to you're not going to not play him the next four years because you traded. Um, so that's like throwing another first-round pick on top of it. Leonard Williams, as much as I'm a huge Leonard Williams fan, he's on an eighteen million dollar base salary right now. So just assume it's a million dollars game. The Raiders are going to have to have. 12, 11, 12 million dollars in salary cap room just to bring the contract on. And he's a free agent in the offseason, and he's going to be on the wrong side of 30. I don't think that's the kind of piece that they're looking to add either. As, as much as I would love to have Leonard Williams, you know, Leonard Williams two years from now is not going to be near the player he was two years ago. So I think he's on the wrong side of 30 uh, as we head into next year. So I think it's more along the line of a, a you know, just another situational edge guy because right now they're trying to play Isaac Rochelle a little bit. You know, Malcolm Kuntz is giving up a ton in the run game, but he's, he's actually getting around the quarterback, but there's not a lot of production in terms of sacks. And Tyree Wilson's just not ready to be a contributor uh, on, on an NFL defense for more than, you know, 10, 15, 20 plays a game right now. Yeah, he's 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 he's, he's struggling as far as that. So no Chase Young in a Raider Raiders Raider, Raider uniform either, right? I, I know those, those are names that people keep talking about. I just don't – I have – Unless they're willing to pay him, because if you're going to trade for him, you yeah. have to pay him next year. and. He's been so, hurt off and on for years. He's had he has a degenerative knee issue. I, I just don't yeah. see that being a being a fit either. And how uh, Halloween is the trade deadline? What, what, what's the what's the dead, deadline? Is it it's somewhere is it, around there? Somewhere around there. So like, I mean, if the Raiders actually won won a bunch of won, won some games in a row and beat and 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 somehow beat the Lions, so I think the Lions game is after the trade deadline, right? It's after the trade deadline. It's in three weeks, so for three weeks, yeah, yeah. So really close. I mean, if they want to, if they want some games in a row in an impressive fashion, then maybe. I would, I, but I don't really want to. I don't. I just don't want to part with any picks in this upcoming draft, because I don't want the flexibility to be hurt for another coach or even this staff if they stay. I want them to have the full allotment of picks so they can so they can help improve the team and, if possible, get a young quarterback. If if that if that situation does arrive in the first round yeah i think the beauty is in the eye of the beholder so you see raider fans who love hunter renfro that think that hunter renfro straight up for brian burns or straight up for Hunter Leonard williams is a deal it's not a deal um i could see hunter renfro and like maybe a second or third round pick if you wanted to bring one of those guys in but again they're in the last year of their deal and you're basically obligated to pay them going forward which I would have no problem doing for Brian Burns. If it was a, a second Hunter Renfro, maybe a conditional pick in 2025, I'm on board for that. If you want – knowing you have to pay him, but then you're admitting at the same time Tyree Wilson is going to be a, a flop. or I don't know where you're going to use him because a lot of people say move him inside. He's way too long, way, way too angular. He's 6'6", six, six, like 270 pounds. He's not built yeah. like a defensive tackle. He's not going to hold up inside. No. Um, so he's a power rush. He's basically a base end in a 4-3 defense, which the Raiders don't run. So, um, so it's yeah, an interesting, sure. but I, I would like to keep all the picks, but for the right player, I would consider it. Now, I'm not trading a one because you don't know where this is going to end. You may yeah. end up trading a one because you think you're going to win seven, eight, nine games and you win four. And exactly. now you gave up a top five pick. Yeah, yeah, you can't, you can't do that. You can't do that. Um, so, uh, can you, can you, can you break down a, a couple of all 22? All, all, all 22 clips can you break down the um the uh the play to mayor real quick and then after that um just just just, just pick one um if you have a favorite one that you want to discuss real quick before we before you preview the patriot game so there's two mayor plays is it is it the first play of the game or is it the one where you copy oh, oh you know what the titans have been such have been so have been so non-existent let's 
let's just do the, the, the all both both mayor plays. Okay, yeah, I'm bringing them up in front of me uh, on my computer real quick. So the first play of the game, the Raiders came out. Um, they were actually in 11 personnel, so they had two wide receivers to the left. Mayor was assigned to the left as well. It was a play action. This is a typical outside run zone the, the Raiders run where you, the tight end sift blocks, so he works back across the line of scrimmage. They're not going to block the defensive end, who in this case I believe was Rashawn Gary on the backside. So the right tackle works down, doesn't block. Uh, the defensive end. So the tight end would come and block that guy, but they didn't call that here. They called a play action. Michael Mayer slip, slips into the flat. Both linebackers bite on the play action on the outside zone fake. No one runs with Michael Mayer, and I think he ends up getting uh, 18, 19, 20 yards on that first play of the game. Then they came back first and 10. I think it was on the second drive of the game. And again, they were able to hit Michael Mayer. They had, this was heavier personnel. This was 12 personnel, so they had two tight ends and one back. It was a power play. They pulled Dylan Parham, came around, so they sold the power run. And Devontae Adams is on the other side. He runs a post. He clears out the backside. But, again, the safety comes down in the box is the eighth guy. Play action. The linebackers and safety step up. Michael Mayer slips behind them on an over route, makes a really nice catch, extending his arms, catching it away from his body. And then he shows the physicality when he finishes the run. Um, it takes several Packers to get him to the ground. So those are the kind of plays why they drafted him. Those plays are there in this offense. If the Raiders – if Josh McDaniels would just get out of his own way and call some play actions on early downs, especially last week because the Packers were creeping, you know, seven, eight, sometimes nine guys within three yards of the line of scrimmage, and they were just turning around and handing it off. And you've seen this all year where the minute Jimmy hand, turns his back, the, the linebackers are coming. Oh um, so getting the ball out into the flat, the end of the end of the game, the play we talked about earlier, like Michael Mayer does a great job chipping. Um, they catch them in a five-man pressure. They clear out the backside. Michael Mayer is all by himself. There's not a guy within 15 yards when Jimmy looks the other way um, and doesn't get the ball to him. But Michael Mayer has been open, and now it's up to – I think it's up to Josh McDaniels to, one, call a play where he's the primary target or the secondary target. Because in a mm -hmm. lot of these plays, it seems like – and rightfully so, the primary option is usually Devontae Adams or Jacoby Myers. They're both having a great, great seasons. But – Jimmy's not getting to the second, the third guy consistently. It's usually Devontae or Jacoby. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. They're covered. Let me find the check down. Boom. So what you're not seeing from Jimmy G is you're not seeing him work left to right going, okay, one, two, let me get to the third guy. And that's usually where my, what Michael Mayer is in these route progression. And they're just not getting there. It's going one, two, check down, one, check down. And if they want to get him involved, they have to use them as the primary option on certain designs. Yeah, and and I, I think that's not too – even though you have Devonta, you have uh, Myers, three or four plays a game, you know. The Packers he, he, didn't even cover him like four or five times in this game. And, and I wouldn't – and I, and I wouldn't either because, because they don't because they don't go to him. So I, and, and then that's pretty clear. That's pretty clear. Uh, Mike from the 718, um, what's going on with Brandon Faison? Is, 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 that, is, is that just another wasted acquisition by this, by this group? Um, he, he's been hurt for the whole – for the whole time. I'm not sure when he's going to get back. I think he was on IR initially. I think he's still on IR now. So I'm not sure um, when Brandon, Brandon face on would, would, um, would be, would, would return. It would have, I mean, he would have been a nice piece to have. So you wouldn't have to have as many snaps for Corey and Bennett, but unfortunately, I mean, that's just the way football is. I mean, people get hurt. So. I remember correctly, it was a non-contact injury in training camp. So he went down. So that's, that's usually a bad sign. The yeah. reports came back. It wasn't as bad as they thought. Now, we don't know what the extent of that was. It could have been, you know, an MCL, a PCL. Clearly wasn't an ACL injury. This might be a 10-week injury that we don't know about. It might be a five-week injury. But uh, at some point soon, they're going to have a 21-day window to take him off of that, get him reacculated to practicing. Um, and then if they don't activate him within a 21 day window, then he reverts back to IR and can't come back. So um, at this point, it's a waiting game. It's a long season. There's still 12 games left. There's 13 weeks. Yeah. Um, that's three months. So if, if he misses another three or four weeks, it is what it is. You might be able to get, you know, six, seven games out of him at some point, which is better than nothing. Yeah. No question about it. Um, uh, Billy from Sacramento, this, did this regime can't even draft a, a running back. So many teams have, at least a, a a a decent backup. I love J Josh Jacobs, but why can't um Jameer um Zamir White get five carries a game? Is he really that bad? P.S. Where is Chris Smith? So all right, this is this is twofold. Um, Josh Jacobs 
is had a lot of success last year and they ran a pretty decent amount of power. And this year, the offensive mm-hmm. line, especially the middle three guys, like I know two of them are the same, but those guys aren't road graders that are going to get movement, especially Van Roten. Parham isn't either. James really isn't either. Um, they're actually, from this last game, they ran a couple of zone plays. They actually appear to be a better zone run blocking line this year than power. But Jacobs isn't a great zone runner. So they kind of have to do a mix of both. Zamir White's probably more of a zone runner, but he's just mm-hmm. not getting enough carries. And at this point, the, the regime is telling you what they think. We're going to ride Josh Jacobs into the ground like we did Until last year. Exactly. We gave him his money, and we might move on after this year. So we're going to get everything we can out of him. And Josh Jacobs, rightfully so, doesn't want to come out of the game because he's playing for another contract too. Um, but at the same time, I don't think, you know, Zamir White is at the level of the guys that, that I think you said Billy was his name. If he's talking about, like, Devin A. Chain or like these guys that are speed burners and breaking these huge runs or, yeah. you know, Zamir White's a power back that needs to be kind of in his own system and he's not going to make a ton of guys miss. But if he does get a crease, he has some long speed to where he can break some runs. We just don't know because he hasn't gotten the opportunity. Yeah. Um, but the, the opportunities he has had, he hasn't shown enough to, to, to really qualify as a quality backup either. And we don't know yeah. what Britton Brown is. Like he doesn't, he hasn't played. He's hey, hurt. Yeah, let's see. Good luck even finding some UCLA tape on, on Britton Brown. Uh, okay. uh, not, not, nothing like coming in and saying, we're going to build this thing to the draft, and you don't have a ton of picture first, and you take two running backs that don't play for two years, and you take two deep exactly. tackles that are nowhere to be found. So, um, yeah, it's crazy. It's not, nuts. not a great it's start. Nuts. It's nuts. Um, oh, and on the uh, Chris Smith thing. Yeah. Chris Smith's the fifth fifth safety. He doesn't – he's not the special team. Roger Teamer, as much as people hate him, I don't know why fans hate Roger Teamer, but he's your big nickel. He's your third safety, and he's one of your core special teams guys. He's active every week if he's healthy. He's Isaiah fine. Palomau is a special teams guy. He's played some gunner. He can match up with tight ends. He can give you a little something in a sub package. You can't have five safeties active because then you got to deactivate someone else. And then Christmas, not going to get snaps. As long as Merrick and Epps and Teamer are healthy, he's not going to play. Yeah, and I think Morag has played. Morag has played well. Epps, Epps is playing. So I mean, Epps, Epps is here for a reason. So and he and he and he, and he hasn't been um, he hasn't been terrible. So I I, I would say um you know I I understand what you're saying, but you got to keep that in mind. Um, Q from LA wants to know the last time we felt optimistic about the Raiders. I know exactly the moment, and I can tell you it was when they beat Baltimore in the home opener. I really I was thought the, I was at that game. Yeah, you know, the I overtime game. I thought it was that game. Um, I thought after that, the emotion, the crazy emotion of winning that game, I was like, "Oh, they're going to be good this year. They're going to be. They're going. They're going." I thought they were going to go, like you know, n- not win the division because the Chiefs are there, but I thought they would have. I thought they could win double digits, like like well, like you know, eleven, twelve games. I, I, I was feeling, I was feeling really good after that game. Optimistic to me. I'm trying to figure out. Does he mean? I think an mean, over five hundred team, a playoff team, a Super Bowl a play, caliber team, a playoff like like a like a good playoff team, like wins up. You could win a playoff game. I would say going into twenty seventeen. Um, yeah, I can after see they that. went to the playoffs in sixteen, Carr yeah. got hurt. Um, that would have been that was Del Rio's last year. So I think the first two it games was, they yeah. came out of the gates, they won, and then boom, the Washington game happened week three. And it was kind of downhill for there. So I'm going to say we like, need a third, really yeah. optimistic. This team could be a, could make a run and actually be in the playoffs year in and year out. I would have said 2017. I think there has to be a 30 for 30 on that Washington game. Cause I got to find out how that team fell apart after that, after that jet game. I thought, I thought we were, I thought they were rolling. I mean, they were, that, was now, crazy. I, that was good. I was confident going into last year that the team would compete for a playoff spot and have a chance to go back to the playoffs. But I didn't think that they were, you know, we're going to stamp this team. This is a playoff team for the next five years. This team yeah. is easily going to go in. This team's going to be the Bills or the Bengals or the yep, – I'm not going to say Chiefs because there might be a dynasty right now. But at least where you could say going to the season, you know, this the bar starts at going to the playoffs. I would say yeah. 2017 was the last time I really felt that. And and I for me, like for me, like last year, I thought that, you know what, at the very least they would score a shitload of points. That that's the one thing that that's the one thing that was a big disappointment for me. It was like I thought I thought they would be like a really like a top five offense, scoring points all the time. You couldn't like if they lost, it was because the defense gave it up. Um, stuff like that. Uh, thanks, thanks for those and, and thanks for the comments. 
as well, too. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. The Raiders do play a game that I will be at. It should be fun times. Um, Raiders, Patriots, thoughts about this real quick. I think that we are running – I think people are just running to the – we beat the Packers. They run to the list of games, and they start reeling off wins. And I'm like, you know, I kind of take, the, I kinda take my, my thing from what Devontae Adams said. Like, you know – it got, it got, it, like basically, like it got to look right. Like it's not looking right right now. What, how they're winning games, and they're lucky. I mean, you you, you sent me that stat um, where you know you know teams who score on twenty points first five games, they're lucky to even have a win. They have two wins, which is which is crazy that they have two wins, and and, and they haven't been able they haven't been able to do that. I would say beware of this week. Um, I might have a surprise pick in this week, but um, <laughs> but. I would say I would be I would be I'll be worried I'll be worried about um this but like going going after all these games and saying that it's a win 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 for the Raiders when they haven't shown consistency on the offensive side of the football and defensively I'm not sure if they they're playing better but I'm not sure if like you know they are going to be besides Max Crosby and more and some some some, some other pieces are, are, are they're going to be like a team that is a like a you know for a fact they're going to give you that great defensive performance every single time I'm going the other way um I've watched enough of the Patriots this year this is your grand grandfather's Patriots from the <laughs> from the Patriots. 70s and early 80s this team stinks and if the Raiders are have anything in them a home game against the team there's they're averaging 11 points a game you yeah know, i know the raiders aren't averaging much more but mac jones has been benched two weeks in a row their offensive line is not good they have no weapons outside juju uh-huh. smith schuster is probably missing this game with a concussion the defense doesn't have matt juden they don't have christian gonzalez um other than josh uche there's really nothing on the other side of the ball Bill Belichick, it looks like weakening at Bernie's on the sidelines. He's not challenging interceptions. He's not going for it down three scores on a fourth and three at the 40 yard line. I don't see any way that this is a game. I I honestly think the Raiders are going to come out. They're going to run the ball halfway decently this week. I think Jimmy G's got something to prove. I think Josh McDaniels has something to prove. I think Devontae Adams has something to prove. I think they're starting to see, hey, we probably should get the ball to Michael Mayer and Trey Tucker a little bit. Jacoby Myers has something to prove. Um, the Raiders beat this team last year. Um, thanks to Jacoby Myers throwing the ball back to, to Chandler Jones. The defense is starting to play a little bit better, but this Patriots offense is atrocious, and the Raiders should win this game by double digits. And everything you said is 100% accurate, but <laughs> – Sometimes this team raids, and I just don't. I, I, I mean, I don't. I don't. I looked. I, 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 I was shocked because I, I had to go back and watch the game. Because when you said that, also about Belichick not challenging these play, I was like, I, I was. I had to go see the because I usually it's thirty five nothing Saints. I'm like, I'm not gonna go to the condensed game and watch that game. I'm, I, 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 I'll spend my, spend my time doing something like doing something else. But when he didn't do those things, I'm like, what is going? What is actually going on there? Um, I just feel. I, I wish I felt a little bit better about them offensively, um, but. If there was ever a week where they can get that going, this has to. This would have to be the week where they get the offense going, where they get over twenty points, where he's just aggressive, like like use the timeouts, cousin. Like you know, what I mean, let, let's try to use that middle eight to score and, and score and double up the score. You were the Patriots invented the double the the the, the um middle eight where, where where you would score at the half and get the ball back, and then and then he didn't take advantage of that opportunity when he had it uh against the Packers. So I don't know what this little crazy conservative like i don't know what to do in certain situations comes from josh, josh, josh mcdaniels but i will at least think that at least this week he should be able to um to 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 win this game i just don't trust him i don't trust this quarterback who's turning the ball over like crazy um i'm not sure if i'm gonna pick the patriot i'm, I'm, I'm probably gonna put the Patriots to cover just because i just feel like that this is what that's what, what the Raiders would do it's very hard for them to win a game going um Win a game where they can um, win comfortably, where we can be at halftime, like joke, sending joking texts instead of saying, "I can't believe this didn't happen." <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but, yeah, but um, I, I didn't go that far. I said they should win by <laughs> double digits. I mean, just give me a third quarter where it's like you know, you know, 24, 24 to three. Like I mean, this is a really, this is a bad. 
like, I don't think he'll get fired, but, like, damn, bad offense, bad team. And you're almost like, damn, like, at some point, if they lose this game, he might be be like, you know what? You know, maybe I need one of those fancy quarterbacks from college. Like, you know, let me let me just let me just let me just, let me reset this whole thing over again. I think Max Cross is going to eat. Um, Trent Brown's not playing very well this year, and they have a guy on the other side. I don't know who this is, but Darian Lowe is the right tackle. Um, on the on for the Raiders side on the offense, the, the offense has moved the ball fairly well at times. They just haven't been able to punch the ball in or. You know, they get that third down and short and don't convert just across midfield. And I, I think this week not having to worry about – there's no Khalil Mack. There's no Joey Bosa. There's no KJ Watt. Yeah. There's no – No Shunter, Judon. There's no Kenny Clark. Yeah. There's not that pass rusher that can get in there and kind of wreck the game. So I think you're going to see the offensive line play a little bit better. I think hopefully the Josh McDaniels – if the Patriots try to play the Raiders, the other teams have, and they're going to put seven or eight guys within three, four yards of line of scrimmage, that he play fakes on early downs and gets the ball behind that intermediate coverage, whether that's, you know, quick slants to Devontae Adams or Jacoby Myers or get the ball to Michael mm-hmm. Mayer. I think Josh McDaniels wants to show Bill Belichick that that he is a good coach, and it's he didn't win because of Belichick. I think he's going to take this personally this week, and I just think it all lines up. Like I literally, I'm looking at the Patriots death chart right now, and I'm not scared of yeah. anyone on this roster. The only guy that I would be scared of is if Ramondre Stevenson gets going on the ground. I'm not scared of Zeke Elliott. He can't run anymore. He's slow. Um, mm-hmm. If the Raiders let them hang around and they let Ramondre Stevenson get involved in this game and get that run game going, that's the only way I see them staying in. If the Raiders get up early, Mac Jones is not going to throw them back into the game. They're going to ditch the running game. And then the Raiders can kind of put it on cruise control you know, going into the third quarter, like you said. So they got to jump out to a lead early. They have to start fast. If the Raiders can go out and get 10, 14 points in the first quarter, the first three drives, this game's going to be over. Question, defensive philosophy here for Patrick Graham. When you're playing a bad – when you're playing a team that struggled this much offensively, do you come after him or you just – are you just going to rush for – and like he's gonna, he's 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 the gift that keeps on giving. He's gonna give you the ball, um, either in either in a turnover situation with a with a fumble, um, interception or just a three and out. I, I would play coverage this week because I don't want them to start feeling good about themselves. I don't want to give up a big play, you yeah. know, get caught in a blitz, man coverage, ball down the field, touchdown. I want this offense to to earn everything this week because they haven't earned anything all season. They yeah. haven't run the ball. They they can't throw the ball. They don't have any outside weapons. So I'm going to rush for, I'm going to trust that Max and Koontz and maybe Tillery or Butler, some Butler revenge game, ex-Patriot, that these guys can beat the front five up front for the the Patriots because they're not very good. And then I'm going to trust my seven in coverage. And it's funny, when I went back and watched the Packers game, I thought they were, I'm like, hey, man, they, they Jordan Love didn't do anything. Maybe they're getting better. They didn't really do anything disguise-wise on the back, and it really confused me when I was watching the film. I'm like, oh, they're playing cover three or cover four basically the whole game. They just played zone. Yeah. And it worked. So this week, you know, maybe I play a little bit more man if I get if I get um, Bennett back on the outside because these receivers aren't going to create separation. You know, what I yeah. don't want is, like, these receivers just go sit down in zones and, and, and they get the short game going. They start dinking it. But I'm going to make the Patriots gain – every yard they can and make them earn it. I am not giving them anything. And eventually we're going to get a sack or Mac Jones is just going to make a boneheaded throw and turn the ball over. He can't drive the ball down the field. He has, he doesn't have a ton of arm strength. Um, so you could, you could see Zappy in this we'll game see. later on too. Yeah. Um, the, the way, the way, the way, the way, the way things have been played going, the last so. two weeks. And he was so horrible I mean, last week too, when he came in. I mean, I, we've, I, we've, people have talked about like, the, the genius of Belichick, and yes, all the rings are there. But like in in recent years with the draft, it, it just hasn't been it hasn't been there. And um, they they made the pick for Mac Jones, and Mac Jones is kind of what we thought he was going to be in, in, in the NFL. Um, I thought maybe that first that first year that partnership with Josh McDaniels, he 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 played pretty well. Um, but you know, last year I'm not sure what they was going on with that the whole situation with the offensive coordinator. And now they have a, his third offensive coordinator in his third year. That can't be a that can be a recipe for um, success for anybody playing quarterback. Yeah, I'd almost figure out where Hunter Henry was on every play and figure out how to get guys around him and make Matt Jones throw the ball to those outside receivers. Yeah, and then. Uh, 
I, I would assume that Hobbs, Hobbs doesn't look like he's going to play. He hasn't practiced the first two days. It's Thursday. He still hasn't practiced. So let's assume he's out. But Tyler Hall played well. You know, Marcus Peters is his own corner at this point. Amik Robertson plays better in zone than man. Um, both safeties are better zone guys. The only guy that really doesn't benefit from playing a ton of zone is D- Divine Diablo. He's more of a man coverage guy that needs to use his athleticism and speed. So I, I think you're going to see a lot of I, – I think you're going to get the same game plan you got against Jordan Love. You're going to see a lot of cover three, cover four. You're going to drop the safety down. You're going to show four and then drop him down to three. You're going to show three, drop him back to four, maybe a little bit of cover two. Um, I, I wouldn't spend a lot of time drawing up elaborate blitzes or anything uh, to get home. I'd have a few in my pocket if, if they start moving the ball and they can't get – Get down there, but this should be a pretty conservative game plan for Patrick. I mean, honestly, last week was very conservative from the Raiders defense. They just executed and gave up 13 points because the quarterback on the other team couldn't figure out what was going on. Yeah, and and, and that could be the same case this week um, as well. Um, prediction? Yeah, I, I typically am more conservative in these. I typically, and I have picked the, the Raiders opponent the last couple of weeks. I'm going Raiders 27, Patriots 13. 27-13. They're going to win by I'm, two touchdowns. Two touchdowns. Okay. I am – I just – I'm still going to be error on the – our error on the side of caution. What's the spread on this game? Seven? Five? Six? It's only three. I'm pretty really? sure it's three. Let's look uh, it up right now. Interesting, yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna go um, 20 to 20 to 19. Like a weird you just can't like get that. above that twenty point mark. Huh? I, I, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the Raiders win the game twenty nineteen. I think that I got like they'll go ahead two and a half to three points depending on which book you're looking at. Which to which, me is what, I, what, I, I lay it, that right now. Yeah, what, 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 I, I try to win Raider games. I, I try to pick it up. I try not to be emotional about it because you know. So, but 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 I think what what happens here is that the Raiders are in control. Patriots score a late touchdown. Um, and, and and garbage time to to kind of screw everybody as far as the betting markets go, as far as that goes. But um, yeah, I mean the, the Raiders. I mean they they can get the, if they can get the three and three, and they have the Bears. The Bears are not the Bears are going to be a whole different animal, um, literally, literally. But um, we'll see we'll see what happens there. But right now the Raiders um, look like I just the scenarios the scenarios scenarios I play out in my mind all the time. I just don't know. Like I didn't, I I looked at the Pittsburgh game and said, I mean, they're worse than Pittsburgh, offensively, but like I, I, I a kinda, lot worse, I, a lot worse. And I, I I was saying that in my head, at least you know Pittsburgh has a couple of receivers who can who can separate and make a play down the field. You saw you saw Pickens last week, um, but I I just don't I, I don't know, man. And if, if this could be one of those games where like at the end of the year, if his job is not. If his job is in jeopardy, this is a game where you click off and you're for Mark Davis to say, "Wow, you lost to that team." Like that's the team. And then if, if, if the Patriots beat the if the Patriots beat them and only win like one more game the rest of the season, that's going to look really bad for Ziegler and uh, and, and McDaniel's. This would be a bad loss for sure uh, on their yeah, resume be, if they lose this it'd be week. Really bad. It'd be bad. It'd be bad. It'd I be... think the question is like, how many Patriots fans are traveling to this game? Because you've seen a lot of of visitors fans in the stadiums but are patriots fans excited to spend money and travel to watch the product they're putting out on the field i don't I know would, if they are i, I don't know it, it, it's interesting because like i talk because i i'm from i'm from the east coast from that area so from that area of all of, of the red sox um patriots and celtics which was just gross growing up um but as far as I, like as far as my a lot of my a lot of my buddies who are who are mean i mean mean about the game from the east coast with patriots fans they they're 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 still coming it's still coming. So it's still Vegas. It's still a party. It's still we got twenty five million rings and y'all don't got any like that. That, that kind of attitude. You know, how, you know, how Boston people talk. So, so, so. I mean, I don't know if it's gonna be that same. What do you say? Sixty? What do you say? Sixty forty last week, or or fifty five forty five? I'd say it's more like fifty fifty the last two weeks. Yeah, the last two weeks. So we'll see, we'll see if they, we'll see if they come. I'm not sure if they. I mean. The, the Vikings fans travel well too, and with their bad start, will they will they travel to to Allegiant as well too? I, I'd, be, I'd be interested to see if they, if they come too. So I don't know. Just the ones that bought the tickets when the schedule came out. Yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> yeah, it'd be a problem. Probably. All right, Lori Nation. Um, we got everything there. Hey, listen, real quick. It's always been a great rivalry in college football. USC, Notre Dame. Who wins? Oh man! I know. I know. Considering the weather is going to be a real factor. 
and Lincoln Riley refuses to run the football. I, I'm still, I still think USC is a better team on the Notre yeah. Dame this year. Um, I'm going to hope that Zachariah Branch plays and it's going to be close, but you know, I think at the end, Caleb Williams will make a play in the fourth quarter um, or one of those receivers and they'll do just enough defensively. Although I, I, I hate watching their defense, but we'll say, you know, USC will pull it out 31, 27 or something like that. I could see that. I could see that. All right, Ray Nation. Um, anything else before we go? No, I just enjoy thoughts. this one. I, I'm hoping this is the, the first game that I can watch as a Raiders fan in the last who knows how many weeks or years where hopefully by halftime I'm eating a sandwich and there's no no heart attack on the way, no sweating out it's, you know the final five minutes of a game. I, we deserve this. <laughs> if we deserve it. If well, not I, now, but, when? If it doesn't happen it, this week, it's not yeah, happening this year. Yeah, I mean, yeah, 100%, 100%, 100%. 100%. All right, Ray Nation. Um, see you next time. Take care. Take care. Welcome to the Put On Waivers Media Group, home of the Put On Raiders podcast and the Student Body Right podcast. This is your place for the best breakdowns and the best insight for those who fight on and bleed silver and black. Now, here are your hosts, Dwayne Douglas and Ryan Holmes.